And this is becoming more and more common using high ground vision either from the hawk boars wards like you see is gonna place here everyone just say hi yeah i mean tundra they're stepping in they're gonna take a trip out in paleo on nine and fada as they're gonna start chasing them down the ball star on the fada that'll be first blood for alliance going the way is limp as well gonna get that nice boost in the mid lane to start things off they're still trying to chase in on to nine but they won't be able to get any more hits on away well, that's that's the sort of a boost that limp would love to love to start his lane with yeah i think they underestimated the fact that alliance would also be there as, as those early spells the slows coming up from the wyvern and the troll the they are nasty especially when you clump up they did for the nyx and pale follow-up looking at s4's item build he definitely is on the same page that his necro book timing oh, needs to come as really possible because that's about as much of a rush of a necrobook I have ever seen. All right, and, and in sort of the this top lane, what PL and the Lich, should he have a pretty good time farming up here, or to deal with the beast? Uh, this is a really strong save lane. Yeah. Andrew. Uh, I I definitely give the favor to the PL lane. This is a very snowbally lane, though. PL falls behind even slightly. He'll just get bullied away by the boar consistently. But if they're able to get like one or two early kills, PL, eventually Beastmaster won't even be able to walk up. This is similar to last game's mid lane, where if PL gets fixed before but if Beastmaster gets fixed first, then Skier will leave lane and inevitably loses power. Very much who gets Snipe and Curves, this is the four position line. Alright. Bajji Mango fast. And uh how are we having in the mid matchup? I mean they, they you know we, we obviously saw draft buys, you know, this time round Tundra, they don't go for, for the Wraith King. The, the, and the, the bear had such and the shaker obviously taken away from them. They had such strength with last game. They do get this void spirit again though for nine and and he had a, a good showing last game. We saw great plays straight from the off in the lane. Uh, a little bit harder this time around, though, I guess, against the, the DP in the match. Yeah, DP seems to be the common pickup against Void Spirit. His He lacks burst damage early on, and he also lacks D push other than throwing himself right into the middle of the creep wave. Unlike a Pock uh, or a Lina, you can't out push the wave unless you're right there. So Death Prophet's quite good against these in your face heroes because the spirit siphon and then inevitably the power threat with the exorcism. And just complements well with the pace that Alliance is trying to set. Very XP dependent pace that they're going for. All the six and just the Necro book will be enough. Pro Warlord, curious to see if he goes for the Battle Fury or sure. more like the phase Maelstrom S and Y mid game esque build. So what would you what would you be more of a fan of in a game like this? Last game he went for the I'm gonna farm while my team makes space for me route and yeah. it didn't go so well. I'd almost prefer Nico Baby play more his style where he goes that mid-game damage item where he's also participating in the fights. I feel like watching Skeeter be active early game and watching Nico Baby sit back and farm was a bit uncharacteristic for him. I'm not saying he played last game incorrectly. I just don't necessarily think that's what he's known for. Chooses to take so far in the lane, just uh, to be having no trouble down here. As, uh, so both side lanes pretty much uh, getting an amount of farm between the two of them. Both off laners and both carries farming a right hit. Bullied out of the lane. It's uh, bottom. Trying to go on to 33. It's a little hard to do so, it's in fact 33 and Viber. Turn attention over towards Nico, baby. Trade a good bit of damage back on to him, yeah. On the low, but he's prepared. They've got a couple of salves in the lane still to go, and he does have that full wand of cool. Well, no, not full wand, but ever. Bam down here. I do like that they rotated the Wyvern top just because of bad and shield. Wyvern's Arctic Burn, making it so that they, by picking the Troll Warlord, usually Nyx Assassin is too weak of a 5 position, or at least to be laned as a 5 position. In this case, the strength of the Troll Warden lane will counteract the weakness of the Assassin early, so 
Fresh. Everyone getting what they need. Fresh. Oh, that's a big one. There we go. S4, he was playing around with Fada with this ball. Yet the ball, uh, he couldn't that's deal with hero. it. He couldn't deal with the ball. S4's micro just bullying him straight out of the lane. Boar is ridiculously obnoxious. 20% attack speed and movement speed slow. It's. It doesn't seem like much. It's only 10 extra compared to level 1 Boar, but it is incredibly potent. This early on. Got any means to deal with it, especially if you poor old support. Damage is certainly done. That's, uh, yeah, but we are starting to see on this top plane. I mean, still, yeah, PL is farming. It's fine as S, but S4 is definitely going to be hitting some good timings on the Necro book. Holy crap, that's gonna be a five minute necro book. Yeah. You said good timing. I went and <laughs> checked. That might be the fastest necro book I've ever seen on a Beastmaster. This is insane. I, I don't know if they're gonna be able to deal with this. On yeah, I mean, I don't think there's any hero in the game that can deal with a five minute necro No, I mean, we're, this lich better watch out. Uh, so we're, we're seeing what S4 does with the boars alone. And again, just this micro. I mean, you see Skeeter just. He, he's starting to struggle to be able to come up to the wave now. He's going to be level 5 on Beastmaster. They're going to have yeah. Catapult. This is a huge timing to get it this early because matched up with the Catapult wave. They don't have the D-push to get rid of this with the PL still being level 5. Yeah, and there I'm you go, Brian. The tower might it, be dropping, or at least this. You are bang on. In 118 matches of Beastmaster, this is the fastest the patch that we've ever seen. Yeah, I think if I'm playing carry and I see the opponent Beastmaster get a Necrobook this early, I'm <laughs> kind of shitting my pants again. Yeah, that's uh, it's got to be a little scary, and uh, we see what S4 does before on his Beastmaster. He does take over games. Definitely going to be a bit of a concern for Tundra. Top plane. They do have the Lich armor, I guess, which is pretty decent. That's sure. Defending the tower this earth. Probably going to tank up that catapult. Right, Radiant die, are they? Are okay, they fort. Good fort by Alliance. Dyer's top tower. Peter doing a good job of dragging the Radiant creeps Dyer's away from the tower. Are fortified. Pressure also coming. TP over to the tier two. We'll keep by the safe. Multiple lanes of catapult pressure at once. This is exactly what Alliance is going for. Yeah, this this you do get rid of the catapult. Alright for now, he, he is level six. And that score is not quite level six. Next wave. Do it. Bottom nine. He's coming with the gank. He's trying to get aggressive onto Nico Baby. It's a little difficult though, as Nico Baby does have the six. So, uh, nine. Turns upon if he overcommits. And if he gets rooted, he might be in trouble. Stuns out. There's the root. They do have the grab. Right, my butt. Coming in clutch to hold back the troll. And that it allows Tundra to turn with the burst. Beautiful grab by five. Tried to block it on handskin, but that was just so well placed by nine. In the way in time. Once again, Tundra is so good at deterring this early aggression. They did it in every game I've watched them so far, including this series. They seem to always draft a slightly greedier lineup that scales better into the late game and really doesn't look to take early buildings at all. And you're seeing here, they they expertly fended off top lane and mid lane, both towers staying alive. Some amount of pressure. They even managed to get a kill on Nico Baby to slow down his timing too. Yeah, Alliance is ahead, but I don't know if this is good Dyer, enough based on how their lineup is. I think they need buildings. We'll be keeping an eye out for the next Death Prophet ulti, as well as the fact that Beastmaster is probably going to get top tower for free. Dyer's top tower is under so attack. Again, and... Lich armor. It's definitely slowing it down a little bit. Forty percent damage reduction. That's pretty significant. Every second he buys is an extra creep camp for Skeeter. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Absolutely. Oh, so it's definitely taken a few more rounds of summoning Necro books to take this tower than they would have liked. Get it this time round. Finally, they'll be able to Dyer's bring it out. Top tower this is top, top, this top half of the map. To be able to hit some very, very far grades. I am concerned because this game, PL, this isn't a hero that wants to participate nearly as early as the Wraith. Yes, once he gets the fusal, he'll be able to take part of these mid fights, but I think he, they might need him early. So 
the Wyatts, their pace might just be a bit too fast. And, and how does sort of troll match up against the PDL and the... the... It, it mostly boils down to how long the fights last. The PLs manage to poke Radiant's your mana down bottom tower and is under attack. make it so you're not able to spam those whirling axes for the chance then PL will reign supreme, but if they can manage to burst out a couple of targets before for further aggression with the deck that's from Exorcism, maybe have an Aegis on the troll so he doesn't care if he doesn't have mana, that's when troll will be perfectly fine in this match, because you can kind of just ignore the PL until the PL has enough items to do damage, because your Whirling Axe against the Illusion. Nine, he's gonna jump over the set of on and lift, they've got the pullback. With the remnant and, and the gaze of Father, and it's enough. They they burst through him. A, a bit of damage done to that tier one with the exorcism, but again, you know, not quite being able to finish the objective with the way that Tundra's holding. And yeah, they didn't bring the Beastmaster with him. It looks like it's for intent to farm up his Necrobook three top. And maybe push that lane in first before he heads mid. I didn't line up those timings. I really felt like the S4 Beastmaster would make his way towards mid when the when Death Prophet ulted, but getting caught again, kind of being greedy with their moves, not committing enough resources to get what they want. Tundra does a great job of punishing this. They saw the Beastmaster top. They know the Wyvern doesn't have six yet, so there's a save coming out. 33 likes this urn drum build, apparently. Yes. The exact Lock item build he went last attack. Yeah. I mean, it, it works out then. Well, why not again? That's good. Scouting out bottom. Just getting to watch his tower die. It's nice to have that instant hex to get six, but this is really why Shaman is so good against Nyx, because you can push the tower without having to put yourself at risk. And Nyx usually preys upon heroes that have to beat top of the tower and don't feel comfortable hitting it. Dyer's Thus, they can't even take towers even fallen. if they're capable. And that's just a huge thing to be offered from a four position. That's why Shaman's even better hero in this meta than before. Very few supports, if any, offer that. We Mid tower does go down though. There's so a lot of trading going on and I think trading favors Tundra. Sure, as you said, well, 11 and a half minutes in, 1k advantage for Alliance, but you really do feel what was sort of Alliance's draft. They, they kind of needed to be a little bit more than that. I would say this is about an even game. Yeah. I don't necessarily want to go and say they should be further ahead. Okay. But by being up by 2k right now, I would say I would lead both teams at about 50-50. Nice move here for Tundra. Sweet round. Nice getting a lot of space. I'm actually going to pop the roar on the way out. See if he can get a kill in return with the Necro. Book and he will. <laughs> That's such a huge momentum swing, though, for Tundra, because Beastmaster, every second he's alive, represents inevitable pressure on whatever lane he's in, and he's basically a doom. Any hero that goes into his lane when Roar's off cooldown is just gonna die, and nobody wants to occupy that area. So by killing him, it allows Nine to get two or three creep waves off, which then allows Skeeter to farm somewhere else. They're getting so much off of the map because of this kill. It's like a farming kill, because by killing him, you have so much more area and so much less pressure. And Anskin, he's coming, he's trying to drop down a ward, but they had a ward there themselves. They see him go for it. They see they can chase him. Anskin <laughs> drop the ult here. Just have that <laughs> extra bit of damage. I mean, it, it sets up for the shackle. It gets the job done. Top lane, though, nine. Just out of range of those axes. Then he gets slowed by Nico, baby, but actually able to, to walk away from the two. People hold off skills too often, man. You need that kill, you committed three heroes there. Eater wants to farm that area without contest. Ult the guy. Yeah. Know, who cares? Absolutely. I like it. Only 100 seconds to out, not all that bad. He's honestly most important for his strong shield stage in the game. Defusal done on Skeeter. Quite good against Wyvern because the Cold Embrace, yes, it protects them from Radiant's the damage, but they will still wake attack. up from that sleep. Dyer's no top tower is under Pretty attack. useless usually afterwards anyway. The Lions can do this move. They, they want to try and get a smoke. Don't move on to this top lane with the Ghost ready to go. See if Tundra are able to hold this tier two. It's going to be a lot of pressure coming in from the Lions. 33 into the trees. Diving in on him. Is Tundra going to be able to offer up any help? As uh, 33 is going to be in a lot of trouble here. As uh, he's damaged right, damaged right deep in the tree line. 
He's able to cut his way through though. The Serpent Wards are down. Can't quite get a grab onto Nico, baby. Skeeter's heading across. He set the last down on him. They're going to use the curse to trap down Nine. Catches the fourth. The beautifully done into the silence, but not Thank enough damage Radiant's to Council take down Nine. They do manage to, to actually get Nico, baby's curse. So that's going to be a blade of alacrity on the sidelines for a couple of minutes. And Tundra. They won't lose anyone, and they are able to push back Alliance after Alliance tried to swing in on this top tier 2 tower with a smoke. And he is going for the Maelstrom as why mid-game heavy build for Nico Baby. Much more up his alley, I think, than last game. And I, I, I'm still a bit nervous for them. Maelstrom's nice. Troll is okay at dealing with PL if you ever manage to lock up with him. But a lot of times with fights, you push that ultimate and you're just hitting blue. And they find themselves killed. Oh, the He's gonna step in though. Drag back has killed the two guys. Shane Frost is out as well. Has him getting approached in place by the cold embrace. FNG trying to save him. FNG's gonna go for the TP out. He's not gonna make it away in time. Mosquito with the illusions takes him down easily. The damage from his diffusal blade. Of course, the rest of the lineup picks off hands can and gets left behind. That was sick by Skeeter. He left his illusions on the Nyx while he was cold embraced, so he had no mana, so he was done for by the voice came scanning. out and chose to use his real hero to chase the Wyvern, getting them that extra bonus kill. Really pushing his limits there, getting the maximum out of that fight that he could. And his timings, they're coming online. Even though you have one core on top and the next three are on the side of Alliance, I think this is exactly what Tundra intended with their draft and are perfectly happy to have heroes like Abaddon lower on the net worth. He's gonna serve his purpose by standing in front of towers like you saw, and also being that late game shield against the war, as well as the next assassin the the first coming up. Silence here for the lift. Stop onto the play, attempted onto hands. Ken, they've got good sentries around here though, Tundra. Ken's attempt to, to sneak stairs. Roche here might not be a bad way to utilize that level two exorcist. Yeah, they're thinking about it. They'll do it very quickly. If they want to try with the deep master in the pit. Maybe they're waiting for Nico Baby to farm his way towards the team. Cleared out his own jungle. Has the Yasha wants his career up. top tower is under attack. They're gonna, they're gonna try and take away this tier two first before back into Roche. Trying to, to force Tundra to come back up it. Dyer's top tower is under attack. I love this item by 33, queuing up the blink dagger, knowing that that Death Prophet silence Radiant's will prevent him from just walking in and saving people. The panel talked about that, but that AoE Illusion. prevent the saves, the the reliable saves coming out from the support and top lane here. So that's a really cool heads up item choice. It looks like a free roach for Alliance. This is exactly what they need to do. Yeah, it's pretty important. Give Nico Baby the second life, allows him to just hit buildings, ignoring the PL. They might even look to go high ground with the tail into this, to be honest with you. That would, that would be quite the move. They have, they, they have the heroes to do it. Sure, you, you feel like if, if they're going to get a tier 2, they're going to keep pushing off. Radiant's They're going to definitely force Tundra back to base, yeah. at the very minimum. We've seen teams where their whole idea of walking to the high ground is at least to get all five heroes at base, herd them into their base, such that you're winning the farm war, even if you're not taking objectives. So it looks like they're going for a trade on the mid lane with Tundra, Radiant's so middle well, tower well played by Skeeter, attack. but he's not going to be able to do Radiant that with the rapid hey, he's, he's And ball has been trapped. They've got the stern for more stuff. And now the chase under the side they can hit stuff on the boys grill with the winter's curse. Now they'll turn their attention over to Wars 33. Nico baby getting low. They get they, they need to get it this tower, the bare minimum for alliance. Because if they get this tower, then the next set of ultimates will be the racks. Tundra can hold without nine. Tower is under attack. Dyer's structure. And then they'll have to let it go, sir. So. Oh my well. Vacation. Are they gonna I back they're off? Backing. They're not Cism is expiring. Yeah, they're not gonna try and stick around and finish it. With uh, nine respawning in, in, in a few seconds. Wow, they actually held that. That was crazy. It's even more important because the 20 minute outpost would have been exposed. It's 1830 right now. They're gonna keep that experience heading their way. Weather the storm, Tundra's going for. Tundra does on the mountains. I wonder if that's their intent when they have these late game lineups. Do you think that's what they were going for, Owen? And there's, there's, there's always a reason behind the night. Or I could just be way overthinking.
No reason. But this, as you said, well, as long as this PL can sort of stay in line and a little bit ahead of the, the tree cores uh, of Alliance, like you feel that the PL is going to be happy with his position as, as long as he's keeping up. This, this is all part of the plan. Peter's in a spot where if he dies once, this game becomes very hard. Oh, and yeah, they get the setup. The curse. They're trying to head over to help out Skeeter. Skeeter into the silence. They've got anything to save him. Weapon down is going to drag some of the wrap of the rules out. S4 able to have that final bit of lockdown to secure them the kill. He used the Manta to push out bottom wave. That was probably their only opportunity to make that exact play. That was a sick timing. The hit from Alliance. Dying's bottom tower is under attack. Because he's the highest net worth on his team, and he is the sole forge meant to carry this game, beside his PL, that death is incredibly common. My path leads to reach my best work. Planning the GG tree to block vision there <laughs> on Fada. Dying's bottom tower is on bounties. Now losing Taz bottom bite. Tor immediately above that kill, pushing in, take the tier one, nine. Nika Baby has got the Aegis still for a couple of minutes. They've got to be careful on how much they do try attack. and commit onto the Void Spirit, uh, with the Void Spirit onto the troll. Thirty-three decided they need a bit of extra stain, deciding to delay that Blink Dagger in favor of the Vladimir's. It's an expensive item, but it feels really nice to buy if you can be a hero. Armor, life steal, damage. It's all about enabling this PL. So the Vlads is basically an extra item. Here, PL. Yeah, and I guess that's the button. You're going to have to show up staying alive as, as long as the PL is. So it's, it's going to be there. Oh, the Nyx Assassin got the Philosopher's Stone. On some supports that have absolutely no way to farm and usually are vision-oriented like the Nyx Assassin, you love this item. It basically doubles your GPM. Yeah, that Yule Set come too far away now. That Nine, about halfway in on his, his Agonims. Ooh, as for... He's looking... Gonna have a Vlad's of his own. Troll loves that item as well. Tundra. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Oh, Dyer's just jump hand skip first. FNG's heading over. He's got a curse to offer up. In from the side. Link comes in with the side. As Hanskin's able to attack him. The start of Hanskin will go down. As now Nine and Skeeter, they turn towards Lip. But Lip's got the BKB. S4 finds the backline. Four on to five, but they take down the Shaman. Radiance Curry has been killed. Nine, he'll snipe a courier, but he'll get himself out of there. Tundra, after losing two, they don't want to commit anything more to this team Dyer's fight. 32 is able to point the borrowed time and get away from this. Alliance, they take the fight Dyer's and they take a further objective. Radiance middle tower is under attack. A little bit late on that outpost though. Still taking a 22, which is nice for the map control. Also sets up the next Aegis. Alliance will most likely take a chill pill on the objective taking most certainly playing three lanes as much as possible farming as much as they can on the map controlling the area around Roche especially when the 30 minutes from now starts to tick of spawn possibilities of Roshan Thor's TP's bottom scanning. it's that extra farm he's gonna have that BKB it's a huge timing for Nico baby he's unkillable I'm curious to see what he follows us up with that's the real question Sanj and Yasha BKB after the Maelstrom. I'd say that's pretty standard if you go for this early mid game build. But will he follow up with more damage from the Mjolnir? Survivability from like Abyssal or Scotty? While I'm trying to get that next item done for Skeeter, he's, he's got the Reaver finished. Closing in on. It's going to be a lot harder to, to deal with the KBs, KB and now that of Nico babies going to make them rather hard targets to deal with. Dyer's bottom Try and do their best to, to kite those BKBs out. Come back in a super net S4. 
Chapman in aggressively onto 33. Skidder starting to get some of the illusions out. And now they're onto it. The book is done. Skidder is not going to be back up as well as the sidelines are held in position. By the way, just cut. Skidder's taken out. He's beaten down it. They've lost Skidder. They've lost Sparta. We'll see on the side nine trying to get in onto Haskin, but he's got to back off himself. He can't get in any more aggressive onto to Hanskin here. Sundry lose a couple and again. Uh, I mean, I don't know if it necessarily saved him in, in that situation, but Skida, he, he's a real fan of sort of popping the mantra and sending in the illusions aggressively. Hanskin, what? <laughs> he, just, he just decides to walk into the serpent wards. Uh, maybe not quite expecting them to be on the high ground. And over to the side, Nico, maybe. He's stuck around. He's getting gone. They might have the same night. They've got the ultimate as he'll hold his ground. Heads will stop up and now jump ball for nine. He's able to find his spot the back line. Skidder and, and Viva. He's going to grab onto Nico, maybe. Nico, maybe, is going to be held in position to hold embrace. Will he him up? FFG trying his best to save him. The silence is about to come to an end on nine as 33 is already chasing. Nine's in with the yields into Remnant. Then pull back. Uh, Nico, maybe they're taking him down. He's dead. As Alliance, they're still trying to fight this limp. Can't get nine, though. Nine's out with a step. And it, it looked to be... I understand why you're speechless, man. Yeah. I can't believe they got him there. But they got... That I mean, it, incredibly it, sick by nine. I mean, I, Alliance just weren't expecting that at all. That that really went down south pretty quickly. I mean, it all started with uh, sort of hands cam walking up the high ground and being, oh my goodness. That's profit when he gets there. That AoE heal reduction against the heart of Tarrasque, as well as the attack speed slow against all the illusions. It adds up in terms of mitigating the PL's damage over time. He is their solo core. Nine has really stepped up. In these mid-game late-game team fights. Radiance mid really attack. His execution as the game goes on. Oh, but he's in. Too soon. I think you, I think you just jinxed him, Brian. Damn it. Oh, sorry, Nine. That's, That's my bad, bro. I'll take that one. Classic stuff there. We oh, blame man. the pause, 100%. Yep. Alliance capitalizing well on the pause. Tundra falling asleep at the. You just lose complete awareness of where the opponent is. I think yeah, pause is the team yeah. that has higher kill threat, right? <laughs> like whoever has higher kill threat always benefits from the pause. Radiance bottom tower. You gotta is make sure that you're sort of more focused after a pause than you be after the rest. Of Definitely a point where things nah. things can suddenly just turn up and hit you in the face. Radiance bottom tower was like is under attack. Dota's like on the dance floor if you were Dyer's just in the middle of your groove and suddenly attack. the music just shuts off for a minute and then you've got to resume dancing. You know, it just doesn't work. There's like this Dota rhythm and you completely go off kill if you have the applause. So I really hate it, but obviously two players disconnected. You got to do what you got to do. Bada, he's about to invest a third of his net worth into a gym. You got to respect that. Yeah, you're a fan of this? scanning. I think against the Knicks, you definitely, and the Hawk, you need to acquire that vision advantage. Alliance, they're looking to set up on Roche. This is really good. This is important. But will they get anything from oh, they, been killed. they assume they're just in there because the way they broke. <laughs> well, they get a car, yeah? <laughs> Easy, Curry. That's what Hanskin can find, dude. Trying to scout things out. He's going to be out of line. The in parallel to Fado. Straight away, that nine jumps over towards the Knicks. He's just able to take it down. They've got the lockdown on Nico, baby, but not longer. Nico, baby, having a move over the BKB. See if you can find another target already. Need to jump off to the side. They try and control nine with the Winter's Curse nine. You got them to simulate back up just in time to dodge the silence from Limp. Jump across the Skeeter. He's getting the illusion sent out onto Limp, draining his mana completely. As Limp's out of mana, he's going to pop the BKB here. As he's a little concerned of the threat of the PL jumping back in on him. This BKB and Exorcism popped by Limp, but he's having to back away and can't look to push the fight any further. Oh, yeah, long fights are really important for Tundra. The buybacks are going to come to come into play as these fights go on because Nine. their initial Nine. volley of spells is almost unavoidable. They're really trying to chase this. They know that Limp hasn't got mana to use, so they can get kills around. Was FNG will fall. The Radiance Most of the lights having to, to fully reset attack. that. Limp needs to get Radiance back to base to refuel. Get this tier one tower thanks to that push. Will they be able to get the road? Top lane nine. They have to deal with top first. Straight out with the TP. In the river. Hansken. He's been found. They've got sentries down all over here. 
they are playing very prepared for this Nyx assassin, really making sure that Hanskin is he's having a struggle trying to start the fights these times round. They're into the pit. No Hanskin for 30 seconds. No boxes cursed. A few timings are unavailable from Alliance. At least Tundra confident to commit to this. And it looks like they're going to be able to do this before Alliance gets anywhere close to the pit. Huge. Shut down the timing. Oh, but he's got curse back up. He's going to go for the big play. He's in. He's able to get the curse off. But it, 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 I guess it was on an illusion. It was on an illusion. It ends immediately. And Tundra, they'll be able to get the time they came for. Roshan and an Aegis is theirs. He tried FNG, but always a hard one to, to go for when there's that much action going on in the pit. A game of Russian roulette, do you feel lucky, yep. punk? <laughs> Just ult one of them, open the right one. And now Tundra, quick, as soon as they're out of the pit, they're making moves down bottom. Nika Baby's got to be a bit careful here. Nine's hunting. Oh, uh, yeah. They is and the he cannot afford to be caught there. Has to use the BKB charge to get out. They just oh, and cheese. I don't think Alliance can win a fight when they have this Aegis Cheese. They really rely on that initial burst from the Beastmaster, as well as the Skull Warlord Ultimate BKB and the Nixus has all of their spells say we want to win the fight in the first five to ten seconds and then chase you down with the remaining duration on the Death Prophet Ultimate. Kill is the absolute king of long drawn out fight. Time and poking them down one by one. So I think this Aegis is is potentially a disaster for Alliance, as Tundra is going to smoke up to make something happen. Ults are at the ready, though, for Alliance. They're smoked up, too. Dyer are First scanning. Back up. Second. It's there. It used to happen a lot in EU. The smokes where both teams end up on the opposite side of the map. might catch the supports off guard here. Tundra might not expect this. I mean, sorry, Alliance. Yeah, Alliance might not expect Tundra coming from the, the back here. Limp's gonna pop the exorcism. Over to the side to get the Silas. They've already managed to hex the best four. Nine, cutting out once the Silas comes to an end. Nico Baby moving in on to 33. They get the stone control off tonight. They're able to take down the forest spread. Viber, locking down Nico Baby for now. The surf wards have been dropped. There's gonna be a buyback for Nine trying to get back in on this, but Alliance, they clean it up, kill after kill. The curse holds back 33. Nico Baby turning over the walls. The speed of PL, can he catch him? Eskida's trying to run. Limp for Nico Baby, they're doing the best to stay on top of them. Eskida shielded up, pops the Manta, he's out to the side, they can't close in on him, and now Skeeter, he's gonna look to try and turn, Nine with the buyback jumps in on Slim, but the BKB's up, Skeeter trying to jump out with the illusions, but they find him, they take him down the once, they continue to try and push Nine off to the side, into the silence, Yules comes out, does the stuff with Hansken, Skeeter's ready for round two, the question is, is Alliance, is Hansken, he's up in the air, over to the side, Remnant pulling back Nico Baby, Nico Baby still has the ultimate line, Hansken tries to TP out, he's not gonna be able to make it away, as Nine looks to chase down both Nico Baby and Lim. It's very last in on the troll. They're surrounding him. The axe is definitely helping him out against the illusions, but now he's there on top of it. They're trying to burn the matter into the remnant. Indeed, Nico Baby is going to have it burned low. He's not going to know to block the battle chance. And Nico Baby is running again. The missed chances from the axe is buying him some safety, but not enough. The spirit last comes in as the final finishing blow for Skeeter as they take down Nico Baby. Dire structures are I was looking so good for Alliance. I was about to just keep my own words as they barely eat that out. I think that was still attack. really good on the side of Alliance. They got the Aegis. They forced a Radiance buyback top from the Void full. Spirit. The problem is, they. I just don't believe they outscale this Phantom one. The panel said they don't have Radiance the natural tools to attack. deal with this hero as the game goes on. This Death Prophet Exorcism Proves to be enough to threaten Skeeter, but if they can manage to kite out that duration, just it, they just don't have the damage to deal with him. Yes, they can mitigate his damage, as you saw there. It takes forever for him to bring down Nico, baby. If you're not killing him in return, who really cares how long it takes you? We saw that last game with how long it took them to kill us four in some of those fights. There needs to be some sort of threat, and as long as they get rid of that DP exorcism, there isn't one. It's just... It's getting bigger and bigger as Skeeter, Radiant the butterfly, top, top of the air with the tunic as well. So, very hard top. for them to, to really cut through his illusions. Positive is the Death Prophet Ultimate cannot miss. Radiant's but top Troll and the Beastmaster, they absolutely.
30% proc on Maelstrom is true strike, so that mitigates a bit of this evasion. Radiant's uh, middle tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. 19 to 19. Radiant's 3k in at the moment from the Lions two. holding that lead. They're three fours in a bit of a better place, but Skeeter sitting at the top of it all. Definitely the, the real, real problem for them here. They've got to try and deal with this PL. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. <laughs> That's like a man. The ether lens on that psychic headband, is, his cast range on that is ridiculous. He also has a level 15 talent yeah, and the psychic. Jesus, look at that cast range on shackles. That is an entire screen, basically. Just goes, uh, goes to show really how that these fights are. Uh... Uh, it's just hard to see them get any easier, right, for Nico, baby, especially with his BKB duration dwindling. You know, it's down to six seconds. I mean, already, you know, when it's six, when it's five, he's got to do so much during that time. As soon as that comes to an end, if, if this Shaman's not dead, he, he's going to get controlled pretty heavily. Yeah, I was about to say, as long as they can bring down the Shaman prior to that, sure. I, I got think it's okay to take long fights. The thing is, they have to be careful of Cole embracing him again because he wasn't able to spam his whirling axes. All of his mana was lost during that. I think that might have killed him last fight. Yeah, it did look a little awkward. I mean, as you say, stops him from sp spamming the axes, and he had ult ready, uh, but, but by the time the embrace came to an end, he no longer had the map to use it, try and stand his ground and punch back. Pins and needles for both teams because whoever, if anybody jumps the back lines on either side, yeah. it spells disaster. Wyvern's super important. All the supports in these fights offer so much effective control or survivability for their cores. Fauna, I'm just looking at his inventory. <laughs> That's a sad one. Nine's got his BKB. We got a couple 10 second BKBs. S4 has also got his. He's super important in fights too. Just his Beastmaster auras alone is enough. And the threat of the roar. Probably crucial to bringing down the Shadow Shaman. It's him or Nyx. And since they're pretty much Radiant's always going to be fighting on sentries, most likely him. He's been roaring Shaman every single fight. That's, that's how much attention they're paying to this four position that offers a bajillion Radiant's seconds of lockdown. Tower is under attack. Is an approximate estimation. FNG. They're looking. Oh, he's looking for the curse, but nice him with the BKB in the silence. He's able to catch FNG straight away. FNG's gonna cold embrace himself for now. They're gonna try their best to burst it. Over with the sky, they've got the lockdown on the lift. The ult's gonna be using it only onto an illusion. Lift getting very, very low. They're trying to finish off 9 Viper. Will be found by Nico, maybe in hand skin as they move the back lines, take down the Shaman. Lift by sometime at the end, but he's so low. The Redman catches him. Lips down. He's out for 80 seconds, and the exorcism down the drain. Look at the range here from Viper as he grabs Nico, baby, up from the high ground. Nico, baby, having to put the BKB to run as he's using the TP and BKB to just oh, get out of there. Hanskin will get cleaned up by Skeeter as well. As we are really starting to see that the struggles Radiant's of Alliance in these team fights is, is you know, sort of one move made in the wrong direction and Tundra just overtake them in the fights. Can't really blame FNG. He almost saved Death Prophet by using the Winter's Curse on the Illusion and almost bought enough time, but it's just so hard to effectively use the Winner's Curse when the source of damage Radiant's is a bunch of small instances attack. from an illusion rather than Radiant's some heavy single target hero. Oh. Oh. These, the, the, this initiation. Yeah, the illusion, there's the mana. Just catching S4. He's out of mana. The damage from this PL and his army is too much for S4 to deal with. s is dead. They're up into the base and again. Five, but this is great. The action of the shackles. He just catches Nico Baby from a mile off. Nico Baby's out of mana. He's going to have to reset, get himself back to the fountain, and that's forced the buyback out of limb. Suddenly oh my goodness, that's, uh, that's a very nice one. Let's see if he wants to keep it from himself. I, mean, I guess the Alvin Tunic, it, uh, between the two of them both, could be a trick state. It, it, Magic it takes the cake here. Much value, I yeah, think. absolutely. 20% on 3,300 health. Yeah. So much effective health there. PL, and uh, PL very soon to 
to be hitting that level 25. Will he take the doppel or the crit? Probably doppel since the long fights are working out for them so far. A lot of dedicating half of his oh, net worth to Clarity oh, Skeeter there. Oh, and he got that. I was going to say that something that's even better than the tricks to cloak. He finds the illusionist cape on PL. That's sick, actually. One thing I always forget about this item is that it gives extra damage to your illusions. Dude, that's it, the main bit about it. What do you mean? That's, I, I that's the main about thing. the fact that it gave you an illusion. Yeah, but... Oh, but hang PL, on. That's good enough. Dude, Brian, hold up. We got a rape here in the game. Oh, they probably needed it. He has a yep. butterfly. Oh, all right, let's counts. go. Is it going to be enough, Brian? Is this rapier going to crush him? I don't see any other way they win this game. I, I admire this. Here we go. The start things. The towards the about a nine. Trying to jump over the wall from back lines. No, they're able to burst him. Oh, it's the big break in from Hanston. It takes him out straight away. He's got to buy back. But they've lost this ball. You know, turning over the wall. Help, but he needs it now, FNG, he's gonna get towards he's not gonna get a chance to get his curse up as FNG goes down. Nico Baby and Limp watching for the sidelines, FNG's gonna buy back Nico Baby, he's on top of nine, he's gonna put the ult, the illusion's tagging in for now, he's over towards the main PL, but Skinner's able to jump to the safety of the high ground, Nico Baby, he's being dragged in over towards the PL, but now he's gotta be careful, Hanskin comes in with the stun, holds back the illusions, but won't quite be able to catch Skeeter, as there's two dead on Tundra. Alliance, gonna pull five of them up there with the buybacks from FNG and S4. And Roshan is up. So now with this rapier, they, they can go for the Roche. They, they've got five up against the three. They, they can have a pretty good job of trying to secure this for Nico, baby. Over to the side, the nine. He's found his four. He's just straight over the back. But it's a trap. They've got the Winter's Curse. They're ready for the counter play. They line it up. Two man and pale. By time, the Lips come over. Nine put the BKB with the rules there from S4. Locks down nine. Nine's out of the game. The four times off. Brought back for this. He's dead as well. Down for two minutes. Wow. As they get baited in there, nine jumping in inc incredibly Oscar's aggressively. Oscar's scouting out Skeeter here. Oh, this would be a huge one if they can get the PL. You know which one's real. They have the damage. Skeeter knows he's screwed. Can he juke? Oh, that, that, oh. that up. And Spore's in on it, and Skeeter is going to go over towards the with one first. Effigy's able to get the golden brace up, but he's going to live, and Skeeter's going to die. No oh, buyback. Lions there. They're pulling off some sweet moves here. And the, the, the Roche, I mean, it absolutely is going to be there as they head to the pit. And it's it's the Agonims as well. Third Roche here this game. That's a big Roche to take. I mean, who's eyeing up the Agonims at the moment? You might even give it to S4, but we give the continuous axe of skill. I imagine they give it to one. The yeah, they give it to one. Got now, there is no other way that Alliance is winning this game than buying that rapier yeah. on Nico. What a sick, ballsy move. We're seeing it more and more often nowadays. Carries oh, don't seem afraid of others for his rapier. Me of my place. Try and hold. I just end the game. Yeah, for 50 seconds without, without Skeeter or 33. And Aegis on They don't know Skeeter has no buyback, but they know 33. Now. I think this game is over. We'll see. They might just choose to go the safe route, which I can't blame them since they don't know for sure that there's no PL buyback. And they do have to lift. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Sets of racks. Police there for Alliance. Dyer's top barracks has fallen. I'm going to stick around for another. Feeling pretty strong right now. To a very comfortable 23k lead and with those two racks that they are gonna respect the, the respawns but back up for now but alliance really getting this this road to victory cleared up as uh, you see there on the, the grass shooting right up after those last few moves around the pit yeah, that's crazy I, I believe Kyle about this rapier purchase would say something along the lines of that is playing to win, baby. The, the There is no fear of loss coming out from Nico Baby with this purchase. He did not have an Aegis nor no. a reliable way to secure it yeah. when he bought that. Are scanning. He also has the Battle Dyer's Trance Strong Dispels, so he can utilize that when he's shackled. It does not work during hexes, but the majority of Shadow Shaman's Disable is the shackle. That may come in handy. And I, I, I guess this is really a, 
really one of the upsides at this stage as well being you know alliance we see you know that they, they have nico baby on a hero that can buy a wraith here that i guess the thing is with the pl you, you can never really match scanning. that right you, you, you never want to be buying a wraith here on a phantom lot yeah it's nice for the crew true strike but the 300 damage does literally nothing so yeah uh, the thing about Skeeter here is that he was able to make the fight long because nobody threatened him. But now Nico Baby, he can run in the middle of him with those whirling axes, and he's not just mischance anymore. He will kill Skeeter. He's killing him, yeah. So that's going to eliminate a lot of Skeeter's damage because his ability to maneuver the fights is heavily limited because of that. a little bit here. Careful, I mean, we've seen her S4 and FNG. They're very ready to make that jump happen. Great tools to initiate. Nice ward coming out of the line. Maybe make it a little more quicker to push on. Every time he steps up, he's he got to be careful. The line's yeah, fine so annoying cards. to deal with this consistent. Yeah, Nico maybe is pretty much uh, inside the island. Uh, they're going to the jump. Xbox going to come with the beacon. having to use two buybacks but they will push back alliance the base the ancient taking a lot of damage they'll be able to head over and clean that out push back alliance but it, it does cost them quite a bit there they might just be able to all in the throne they do have fortification on tundra but if they are ever forced to use that alliance could probably just ignore them and hit the bed utilizing the curse to stall out their single target building damage is insane. And we, and we do see, you know, Skeeter, I mean, he, he, he feels like he just has to go for this rapier, right? Because everything's missing. He's running in, these axes are flying around everywhere, and he's he's just not been able to have the, do the damage that he wants to. So over he goes. He's a rapier, just a few hundred gold away from being online on this PL as well. Yeah, rapiers tend to be infectious. One guy gets one, and the other guy says, well, crap, I can't man fight this guy anymore. I guess I gotta yeah. buy one. Definitely the logical response for Skeeter. Like you said, though, it does not feel good on Phantom Lancer to buy the guy. That's so cool. <laughs> he does have the critical strike, though. So his main hero will be hitting pretty hard, and a lot of his damage was being mitigated by the mischance of the Whirling Axe. Yeah. So even though he doesn't actually benefit from the bonus damage, his illusions are still hitting for all, more than twice as much damage effectively because they will not be missed. No, honestly, uh, yeah, it's, it, for, for that 100% true strike, it, it's probably worth it alone at the stage. Uh, yeah. Solves such a huge issue. The way that he's holding the high ground, sending his things out. Interesting that Nico Baby went for the Scotty. For me, it's double-edged sword. You got more mana to work with, but then you have more mana to burn. <laughs> I never true. really know That's how true. that one plays out. That's a conundrum I always find myself. I mean, honestly, before sort of the 
the rapier's done on the PL, I, I, I guess, you know, that he feels that, that the missed chance is allowing him to, to not really be threatened too much by, by some of these hits, and he doesn't really care, but now definitely the, the situation has changed. And they're going to try and smoke up and make a move, see if they can catch Tundra outside of the base here, Alliance. Slim, Dyer leading in. Smoke's going to get dispelled. Not going to get spooked by the illusion too much. Now Tundra knows what's up. As uh, Biber is going to jump over the head, Commits with the BKB, tries to tackle the Askin, and now with the start of the check force, comes in with a burst through the Shaman. The curse is holding down the PL, but have they got anything damage-wise? They're trying to take him out into the Imperial. They're going to lock him down. They'll bring him over. Skinner's able to put the back to jump out with the Doppelganger. Skinner will reset for now on the side of the fight. So just very last over to FNG, Knight's out of there. They'll leave 33 behind. Skinner just heavily on the retreat, trying to desperately get back to the base of the Lions. They're chasing, and they've caught him. The Imperial's out. They've lost Skinner down. As Alliance, they should be able to close this one up now. FNG picks up the rapier for himself as Alliance are ready to waltz down mid and take this game. I will make my first accurate prediction of the game and say Alliance will be able to take it. Unless the four heroes they can do something amazing. Nine, he jumps in, but immediately has his prepared with a spike carapace. Nine on the dieback. Bada can do nothing against this. Four of them dead. GG is called. And Alliance will close up this game two, equalizing the series. Yeah, I think this says a lot about Alliance. They had an early timing lineup, and Tundra did a great job of fending it off. And even though they didn't quite hit the timings I think they envisioned with their...